Okay, Dave Colworth, thanks for talking to Bayloric TV. No problem, mate. Finally, Bye. we've got you on camera. Yeah. So, you're here, mm -hmm. Fox Grows 2. Everyone's been asking you the question, who's going to win? But I'm not going to ask you that question because Bayloric do it differently. Go on, man. I'm going to ask you who's, lose, who's, who's <laughs> leaving who's leaving the arena a loser. Let's talk about the loser. Oh, that's, that's, that's harsh, that is. <laughs> I don't know I'm saying that. <laughs> I, oh, that's harsh. See? Um, it all depends. Mm -hmm. And people think I'm sitting on fence. I'm not sitting on fence. It all depends on who sticks, uh, who can implement the game, game plan on the other guy. Right. George Gross, for me, doesn't hold his feet as much. Right. Boxes more. Right. Counters with vicious counters. Right. Different angles. Right. Beats Carl Froch. Right. If Carl Froch can turn it into a dogfight. Right. Smash him to the body. Right. Tire out his legs. That's right. right. Yeah. Then start chinning him. Right. Carl Fox wins the fight. Okay. So it all depends. Now, if you ask me, who do I think will be, who will actually yeah. stick to the game so plan and be able to implement the game plan? I think George Groves will stick to it, and, it, and he can. Right. He can do. Under pressure, with the, without Adam yes. Booth and the whole rage right, thing. Right. Right. The big thing. Right. The big thing right there is Adam Booth. That's what I'm saying. For me. And this is no disrespect to, 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 to Paddy, to, to Paddy, not at all. I just don't think that they, they had enough time to mesh for the last, for the first fight. Right. If Adam Moon was in the corner, right. Adam could always control George. There's a when, feeling when, that whenever George started to hold his feet mm -hmm. too long, and you could see the tide. Yeah, 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 yeah. Adam would have got him back. See, there's a feeling boxes. that Groves could have won the fight easily. Yeah. yeah. With Booth in the corner. Yeah. It, it's not so much with Boogie Corner, it's if he'd have carried on with his game plan of, and not standing as long and getting excited when he has a success. He had a hell of a lot of success. Yes. And it's so hard when in a 50 50 fight you go out there, you chin the guy yeah. that's got a super chin in right. the first round. Yep. Not to then just think, I'm going to knock this guy out. Right. You know? So I understand it's so hard for that to happen. But for me, that is where, where George lost the fight. Forget about the stoppage, he right. lost the fight. Right. And for me, that's where he lost the fight because by standing there and exchanging for so long, Carl Froch is a, people don't like to give him credit for being a warrior, he is a warrior. Carl Froch has experienced him being in brutal fights, right. in hard fights, you know, you look at right back to the days of Pascal. Right, you yes. Know, you know, there's Pascal, there's, there's, there's Kessler, there's, there's Taylor, you know, there's, there's Taylor. You know, he is experienced in fighting like that. Now, he is built for them sort of fights. Right. George allowed himself to fight Carl's fight right. over the last few rounds right. when he started getting tired, which is understandable because he was dropping bombs all night long in the right. first six rounds. So then he got tired, started getting ragged, started right. making mistakes. Okay. Same mistakes as what he made against Kenny Anderson. Yes. When he got wild dropped and, and got dropped hurt mm -hmm. against Kenny Anderson, it was because he was slugging with him. Yes. Came back to the corner, got a bollock in, don't slug with a slugger. And went there. back out and boxed. Mm -hmm. That's what he needs. He needs not to slug. Now, that tells me that from the way that I break it down now, mm -hmm. take emotions out, take the hype out, is is Carl Froch faster? No. Is Carl Froch more skillful? No. Has he got faster feet? No. no. Is he tougher? I think yes. Has he got a bigger heart? No, no, I, no, because mm. I know George has got heart. He's got right. a huge heart. Yeah. Right. So heart doesn't come into it. Heart don't come into it. So they're, they're equal because they've both got massive heart. Right. But is he tougher and has he got more durability? Yes. So for me, that tells you if George boxes and uses his his it's advantages, he wins. Carl, Carl can't beat him. Right. But if George stands there and allows it to be a dogfight, right. Carl then becomes a favourite for me. Right. And down the stretch and it's down to who, who, who boxes how. So I watched the first fight and then I watched um, Groves' fight with DeGale and the thing I noticed with DeGale, the strategy was to always keep close to Groves. When he kept close to Groves, Groves was not as effective. As soon as DeGale backed off... What you've got to remember is DeGale's a lot harder to hit than what Carl is. Agreed. So you can't get as close when somebody's stinging you. Right. If somebody's constantly stinging you, yes. it's very hard to get on top. If you've got a good tight defence, you yep. might be able to creep up and close the range down a bit right. easier. DeGale's got faster feet, right. um, so there were points in that fight where he could 
perhaps get up a bit closer. But all the times that Frotch got stung is when he was off the back foot. When he was coming forward, I mean, he got come, come, came forward and he got dropped. But his two feet were yeah, yeah, square, yeah, so yeah, the punch yeah, looked terrible. bigger than it actually yeah. was. Yeah. I mean, you could have pushed Frotch over oh, and he would have gone over. But his two feet were square, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So his he, had no, balance, he had no his balance. balance. His balance was terrible, but, but, but if... You know, you look at you look at Carl and you look at his eyes when he got hit. If his yeah, feet were but... right, he was going to get dropped with that shot. It was a bomb. <laughs> it was it a just bomb. So happened that he actually walked into it yeah. and doubled doubled the impact. Yes. You know? But as this is what I'm saying, my issue is Carl's got to do a couple of things there. George hits too hard to take clean shots on Wayne. Yeah. That's a fact. George does it hard enough. Yes. You know, so he's got to have his hands up. How many fights do you see a Carl Fox he's hands hands up. walking somebody down? You don't. He don't. So he's got to do something at that he's never done before. That he's not done before. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying, for me, George has got to get a little bit careless or, okay. or a little bit drunk on his Okay. Let, 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 let's stand another let's spin this a bit. Right. You know, we could do it Baylor style. Right. You're the trainer of Carl Froch. Yeah. What do you tell Carl Froch to do against George Groves, knowing that he's slower, got poor footwork? You're his trainer. You've been employed. You've been every given a million. Uh, every opportunity he gets, smash him to his body. Especially early doors. Forget about it yet. He ain't gonna out jab, out jab, uh, George. Right. Unless the little, the little bit of successes that Carl actually had was when he let George lead. Right. And he catch him. In fact, just before the stoppage, the knockdown. Okay. In round one. Right. People never picked up on it. Carl landed a good shot that actually registered on George, and he could just he didn't wobble. But it hit him and it caught him and it registered. Right. Right? And it was a counter punch. Whenever Carl's at range and leads, he gets right. counter to death. He cannot do that. He'll get, he, you know, starts, that's, that's just half, fun for George. So he's either got to so he, uh, tuck up tight, mm -hmm. work his body. Every opportunity he gets where George might move off, he's got to close the range down, get on top of him, right. work his body early door, take away them legs. Right. So then, and then hopefully, ride out the storm early part of the fight. Okay. And then, put it on him as okay. he goes on but he can't just take punishment for the first few rounds okay like the first fight right he's actually actually got to put some damage on his body right in the first half of the fight okay still expect to lose not expect but still understand that he may lose the, the first, first half of the fight but come on strong the second half as long as he's making George work right and tagging him underneath at the yes. same time right then George is going to be tired of, but he's got to get tired of earlier than what it is because I, I don't think that that Carl can keep taking bombs at, at his age now yeah. coming off the way that he took the bombs last time without taking something away from has he got anything left well there's two ways of looking at it you can either say the first round knockdown took that much out of Carl that for four or five rounds after that yeah. he had nothing and he was he was getting hit at yeah. will or you can say the age kind of caught, caught up, up with him. him listen is there's no disrespect on saying a man's getting older right it happens to every single fighter of course you just don't know when it's going to happen to Bernard Hopkins at some point absolutely the only difference is Bernard Hopkins picks when he wants to throw his shots right picks when he wants to stand in pocket right otherwise he's keeping people offset right keeping them off balance so a big, big puncher can't set his feet right Bernard Hopkins has got the skill got the ability got the mindset yeah Carl Froch Froch has got that. Right. so Carl Froch in his peak gets it for fun Right. So Carl Frotch, when he's getting older, slower, he's gonna get it for fun. Right. So he's gotta he's gotta do things in the fight. He's, he's, he just can't take as many clean fight, clean shots. But at the same time, he's he's gotta take something away from George for the second half of the fight. Okay, let's switch to you, Cold World Boxing. What's going on with that? We're just we're just flying to be honest. We've had we've had a great great season as we have over here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some some great shows, great performances, mm -hmm. got some cracking prospects coming through. Mm -hmm. um, It'd be fantastic if we, if we got a bit of TV. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, it ain't gonna happen in the sky for a bit. Right. For, for a long while, I don't think. Okay. Um, Channel 5, I'd love to be on Channel 5 because we um, we have good shows. Right. And, and the fans, it's not me, it's not my job to say our shows are better than his, are, like that. it's not my job. The fans, you know, that, that come to our shows, that see our shows on Coldwell mm. Television, mm. you know, they all, they all enjoy the shows, they know right. what we get with us. We're getting, you know, a stage now where, where people book tickets for our shows online before we've announced who's on the bill. Wow. You know, we say, oh, I've got a date, this is this, blah, blah. People start, start booking tickets online. So you're obviously, fantastic. you're obviously doing something right then? Yeah, because we put on good fights. We put on fights where, where fans turn up and you don't know who's going to win. You know, I think that's important because it's an entertainment business. Yes. You don't understand that. You know, you've, you've got to test your fighters. You've got to have a, a, 
you know, a prospect that's got yep. a chance of getting in. Right. And, and I have questions asked of them. You know, and um, that brings them on and that develops them. That's why I ain't fussed if they get beat. Because I am fussed, but it's not the end of the world. Right. If one of my prospects gets beat, I bring them back. You know, yes. as long as they learn from it yes. and, and, and gave a good fight and, and did the best, and you can see that the, there is some potential there. Right. You bring them back. Dave Colwell, it was a pleasure talking with you. It's been a pleasure myself, mate. Thank you. No, no problem.